Hello everyone, this is Urvashi Chahan and I welcome you back to Courts Today by Live Law. We bring to you the latest and in-depth legal coverage. Coming to you with a brief of what all happened in the Indian courts today. Starting with the Supreme Court which today dismissed a plea challenging an eligibility criteria for taking the joint entrance examination that is JEE advanced through which admissions to various undergraduate programs across Indian Institute of Technology are carried out. The impugned criteria required candidates to have secured a minimum of 75% in their class 12th board examination. This rule was waived during the COVID-19 pandemic as board exams were cancelled, but subsequently the rule was revived. Today, the Supreme Court bench of Justices Sudhanshu Dholia and K.V. Vishwanathan dismissed the challenge against the rule. The bench also refused to entertain an intervention application filed on behalf of a candidate who had secured 10 marks short of 75% in the class 12th but scored 92% in JE mains. Although the council vehemently assailed the policy as discriminatory and violative of fundamental rights of the intervener, the bench declined to grant her relief, noting that the information bulletin published by the organizing institution had categorically outlined the academic performance criteria. Also, if you remember earlier this month, the Bombay High Court had also rejected a similar plea. And now coming to the Delhi High Court, which today dismissed the public interest litigation challenging Reserve Bank of India and State Bank of India's notifications that permit exchange of rupees 2000 currency notes without requirement of any identity proof. A division bench of Chief Justice Satish Chandra Sharma and Justice Subramaniam Prasad rejected the plea moved by BJP leader and advocate Ashwini Kumar Upadhyay. Recently, the RBI announced the decision to withdraw rupees 2000 notes from circulation. However, it said that the currency will continue as legal tender and people can deposit 2000 rupees bank notes into their bank accounts or exchange them into bank notes of other denominations at any bank branch. In another update, the Kerala High Court today refused to stay the order of the Lokayukt by which it referred the case against the Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan and the former ministers alleging misuse of amount in the Chief Minister Disaster Relief Fund to a full bench comprising the Lokayukt and both the Up Lokayuktas. Let me tell you the background here. The complaint by the petitioner R. S. Sasikumar before the Lokayukt was that the decisions taken by the state government in various instances of sanctioning amount from the fund were actuated by favoritism and nepotism and that the respondents lacked integrity in discharging their duties as public servants. After elaborate hearing covering all the points, the case was reserved for orders on March 18, 2022. However, even after one year since, as no order was passed, the petitioner then approached the High Court. Subsequently, in March this year, the Loka Yukt delivered its order referring the matter to be considered by a full bench. And against this order of the Loka Yukt, the petitioner has now approached the court again. Today, the division bench comprising Acting Chief Justice S.V. Bhatti and Justice Basant Balaji clarified that the court was in dismissing the petition and posted it for further consideration on 7th June. Stay tuned for further updates. The Delhi High Court today issued notice on a plea moved by National Investigation Agency seeking death penalty for Kashmiri separatist leader Yasin Malik, who was convicted in connection with a terror funding case. As you know, Malik was sentenced to life imprisonment by a special NIA court in May last year. He had pleaded guilty in the case and did not contest to the charges against him. While awarding him life sentence, court had observed that the crime failed the test of rarest of rare case as held by the apex court. Today, a division bench of Justice Siddharth Mridul and Justice Talwant Singh issued notice to Yasin Malik through the concerned Tihar Jail Superintendent and listed the matter for hearing on August 9th. Interestingly, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta, appearing for NIA, compared Malik to Osama bin Laden and said 
that the USA was possibly right in not giving him a trial. And now coming to an important update from the Rajasthan High Court. Allowing a physical training instructor to get his name and gender changed in the service record after a sex reassignment surgery, the Rajasthan High Court said that the right of a human being to choose his or her sex or gender identity is integral to his or her personality and is one of the most basic aspects of self-determination, dignity and freedom. Justice Anoop Kumar said that everyone is entitled to enjoy all human rights, which are a basic necessity to survive without discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. The background is that the petitioner who took birth as a female was working as a physical training instructor under the general female category. At the age of 32, she was diagnosed with gender identity disorder and underwent sex reassignment surgery. After this, the petitioner started identifying herself as a male. The consultant doctor had also issued a certificate in this regard. After getting the status of male gender, the petitioner successfully got his name changed in the official gazette and his Aadhaar card. Subsequently, he submitted an application to his employer for change of his name and gender in his service record. Despite having made the application over three years ago, the name and gender of the petitioner was not changed in his service record. He therefore challenged the said inaction and delay on the part of the employer through the present writ petition. Lastly, the Delhi bench of the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal has quashed the penalty under Section 271B of the Income Tax Act against National Law University Delhi on the grounds that NLU Delhi is not engaged in business and exists solely for educational purposes. The bench of judicial member Anubhav Sharma and accountant member Anil Chaturvedi has observed that to justify invoking the mandate of section 44AB, it was necessary to see if the Assessi University can be said to be engaged in business as defined under section 213 of the Act where the word business includes any trade, commerce or manufacture or any adventure or concern in the nature of trade, commerce or manufacture. To know about more details on the case, you can click on the link given in the description box below. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can check the links given in the description box below. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us.